Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're having a CUBE conversation in our Palo Alto studio. The conference season's taken a little bit of a break, so now we can do interviews in the studio, which is a little bit more comfortable situation, and we're really excited to have first-time guest, Karen Steele. She's the GVP of Corporate Marketing at, Mar at Marketo. Karen, welcome. Thank you, very happy to be here, Jeff. Uh, absolutely. So, you are talking about um, something that I've, I've seen in the research coming up to this about engagement, and right, everybody talks about engagement. What is engagement? People are trying to measure engagement, yep. but then it seems like so many people are still stuck though on the mass broadcasty kind of numbers. They want big numbers, which is a very different number than engagement. So, right. you guys are getting really into this. Obviously, Marketo, a leader in, in, in marketing innovation and marketing platform. Is this new? Is it new, renewed focus? I mean, how do you guys deal with this whole concept of, en of engagement. Yeah, so thanks, it's a great opening question because we are passionate about engagement and in fact, we believe that today, people, human beings want to be engaged with as opposed to marketed to. Right. So our CEO created a vision of this idea called the engagement economy. Um, and the idea is that everybody and everyone is connected. Today with the digital transformation happening around us, you can touch people, touch customers anywhere and everywhere throughout their journey. You know, before they, you, they buy from you, during the sales process and post sales. So it's all about creating an experience and we think the way to do that is through engagement. But it's, it's kind of interesting because the dichotomy is we're in this Google world, right? And, and mm -hmm. the Google world is, you know, build great engineering, people will come. It's all about the data, it's cookies and where have you been and, and you know, recommendation engines and, and more this kind of feels more in, uh, machiney right. and not necessarily engagey, which, right. which is more of a person to person than necessarily a machine to person. Correct. But, but yet, even the person to person is still supported by and enabled by a lot of this technology. So this inter, intertwining of both kind of a person to, to, to to machine or machine to person, excuse me. Yep. Versus really c connecting with it, whether it be the brand, whether it be a person that represents right. the brand. So how do how, how you see this kind of evolving, and how can people not get too wrapped up in the machiney part, right. And actually build a relationship, uh, another word, instead of engagement with their customers, or even take it another step, really their their constituents, if you will, yes. their community, even even more passionate. Yes. Yeah, so I think it's interesting you brought up the machine aspect because there's sort of a positive and negative. So if you think about the space we're in, it's called marketing automation and it does feel sort of process oriented and, and, and machine-like. Right. But at the end of the day, marketing has always been about the human being and building that relationship. And technology has just simply helped facilitate that and do it through multiple channels like never before. But it still comes down to the marketer's primary role is to connect with in a personalized way, in an authentic way, and create a relationship, a relationship that's going to generate advocacy for the brand, that's going to ultimately generate revenue for, for their business. So it's really important that engagement is about the human being, and it's about how you can create positive experience throughout the life cycle of the journey. Right, it's interesting you say experiences too, because we've seen a, a huge shift in in, in two customers wanting really more of an experience or an engagement that's potentially tied to a brand, but you look at great experienced marketers like Red Bull, yep. uh, to pull one out, that, that you know, buying, drinking a Red Bull, the way they've positioned that in the marketplace is really being part of this really cool thing, it's visually stimulating, it's, it's, it's you know, a lot of adrenaline yes. and, and a lot of cool stuff. And then the other one I always think of is Harley Davidson, um, and the passion that that community has around that motorcycle, but it's so much more than driving that motorcycle. You know, yep. it's it's the open road and it's all the accessories and stuff that they put. But, but you know, people brand it on their arm. A lot of people. Right. So in terms of you know how how does that translate with newer brands? How do you try to get that type of of connection with your customers? Hold it. And I think you've mentioned in some of the things I looked up before the interview. You know, really thinking about the lifetime value of the customer as opposed to a transactional relationship right. that's a one-time shot. Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of the examples you, you just gave are very experiential in terms of um, the physical aspect of, of, of seeing and feeling and touching a brand, but a lot of digital marketing is, is not physical, and so you're communicating with people through a lot of channels that, that are bits and bytes, and they're not looking somebody in the eye, and so I think 
being in touch with your brand and the messages you want to deliver, making sure they're relevant and they carry your brand promise forward and they connect with what that person wants to hear at exactly the right time. Right. So for us, engagement is, is about being smart in terms of reaching the person. If, if I use a social, or excuse me, a mobile device, and that's my preferred way of communicating with you, I want you to reach me through that device and not try and get me through direct mail or an email campaign. I might not pay attention to any of those things. So right. having that intelligence about your customer or your prospect or your partner or even your employee is gonna give you a better option to engage with them and create that one-to-one -one while you're still marketing one to many right. in terms of the actual relationship. The other challenge a marketer obviously has too is, is I don't know who said it, we do too many shows, but you know, when it's done well, when suggestive selling is done well and recommendation engines are working well, it's magical, um, yep. right? It's what I want, when I want, and it's presented to me. If yep. it's done poorly, it's creepy. Right, I yep. don't necessarily know that you want to know that that was that you know what I was looking at, and obviously the, the target example, which now is is way far in in the rearview mirror. But you know, just because you have all the data doesn't mean you can use all the data, and the challenge and the nuance of knowing what to use, when and where. Right and now, you have so much more kind of ammunition in in, in your in your quiver, if you will, yep. is a whole different type of a challenge. Yeah, I think. It's it's a good point, and I think it, you're right. It, you don't want it to feel like Big Brother and somebody's following or stalking you. That's the last thing you want. But I think paying attention to the response, paying attention to a personalized message, testing that message, seeing what comes back, and helping execute the next thing that you do. And so there's, there's sort of a fine line, but I, I definitely think the marketers that are using analytics today, and it's just getting smarter and smarter, and I, we're going to talk about adaptive coming up here, I right, hope. Right. And um, you know the, 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 the big buzz right now, which is AI. You know, what does AI mean for engagement? And we have some ideas around that right. as well. Okay, so you broke it down to the big threes. Yep. Uh, the engagement economy. So the art of storytelling, yep. adaptive engagement, as you just mentioned, and yep. then advocacy, yep. um, which you talked about earlier before. So let's let's kind of touch base on each one of those things. Great. How do you define them? Why are they important? So we'll start with, with the storytelling. Yeah, so it comes back to what we've already been talking about, which is the one-to-one -one relationship, understanding who you're talking to, crafting a message that, that resonates, having that message be front and central to what your brand value is. You know, we are more prone to buy from somebody if we value their brand. You might make choices and pay a price premium if you care about a brand or how a brand interacts with you. So crafting the art of storytelling is the right message, making sure it resonates, understanding your audience, and connecting it to the brand so you can make that emotional connection. Right, right. So, so done, do you done well, you, you can do a very good job. Right, and it, it's, it's, it's always interesting to me, I always think, I uh, watch sports on TV, right? I always think of the, the poor guy that just got assigned, I got to do a car commercial. Like, how many car commercials have been created up till now, and I got to think of a new one. Right. But, but you know, kind of traditional, kind of high-end TV broadcast commercials are really um, storytelling. I mean, some of them are fascinating what they can actually convey in a 30-second right. ad, or whether it's a Coke commercial and it makes you cry at the end. Um, so that that in that format is, has pretty well developed, but how are you seeing it, it translated into all these various digital formats and really short engagements or it's a Snapchat or it's a, you know a quick hit on Instagram or it's a Facebook post. Yep. How are you seeing some of that storytelling evolve into these different kind of uh, communication mediums if you will and, yep. and you have and you have so many that you have to right. to manage right a huge challenge. Yeah, and again I think it's it's the authenticity as I said but also the personalized nature of it. I want to deliver a message that matters to you where you want to receive that message. I might want to deliver something different to somebody else through an entirely different channel. So, but crafting the story, having the, the story be based on what you stand for as a brand and the value for that customer or whoever the message is you're attempting to land it on right. is still foundational and fundamental. And I think that a lot of the marketing, because technology's automated so much, we've lost a little bit of the, the art of the story mm -hmm. and really making the story connect back to you as a brand so that you, you deliver the best message to your customer. Right. So that kind of feeds into your second one, which, which you described as adaptive engagement, which I presume is situational. Um, 
contextual. Correct. That defines the how, the when, the where. The yeah, where. yeah, and I think in terms of our vision, so yes, it is about delivering the right message at the right time to the right person to get the response you want. That's right. sort of the, the basics of adaptive and being able to do that very flexibly with technology. But when we think about adaptive and the next generation of it, we think about the impact that AI will have on engagement or marketing. So imagine a marketer today could say to their engagement platform, let's say the Marketo engagement platform, I, I want to understand an outcome and the best way to go about it. I want to know how I can increase sales in a particular region in a particular quarter. And, and the engagement platform based on that outcome that I want will help determine what the right campaign is, what creative elements you put in that campaign based on the assets you've created, and importantly, who you target and what is the audience. And, and think of almost just creating that outcome, having the platform deliver that whole experience when you push a button and that entire campaign gets executed. Right, right. So that I think is the future of adaptive. Because you'll be able to run, you know, A-B test is, is probably a, not a very accurate description, right? Right. Because it's a multi, much more multivariate um, tests that you can run and really right. start to optimize f for a much tighter group of attributes of your customer right. than you ever could. Yeah, to, in the and, past and we, or we try to think of every kind of variable. And we do that today, but I think I think now what we're saying is the marketer is going to truly be in the power seat where they can say not just here's two ideas, test one against the other. It's basically here's the outcome I want. Right. Tell me exactly the best way to put that message out, what channel it should go through, who it should be delivered to and run it, right. and so I think that's going to be the future of adaptive. Interesting, and then the third A that you have of uh, engagement economy is advocacy. Heart and soul of any brand strategy. You know, customers, loyal customers are great customers, and you want to create advocacy and relationships. I think when, 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 when companies talk about advocacy, they talk about I want a customer reference. I want right. somebody who's going to approve a customer story or a quote in a press release. We go far beyond that when we think about advocacy. We, we want customers that are going to partner with other customers and, and make the community around us better. And right. so they're speaking on behalf of our brand, Marketo, but they're also making our brand stronger in the relationships they're creating around Marketo. So we have a program called Purple Select, which has about 1,200 customers that every single day you know, we're putting challenges forward for them. We're offering them places to go, you know, generate conversations and community. And as a result, they give stuff back to us right, and they, right. they make things available to us that otherwise it wouldn't be. It's really kind of uh, analogous to open source, right? The fact that, you know, all yep. the smartest people in the world don't happen to reside in your four walls. And, yep. you know, if you can use your product, service, offering, platform, store as, as a as a basis point for an engaged community to engage around, through, with, Correct. you know, the, the, you get, you know, one plus one makes three or ten uh, for that. So huge, absolutely huge kind of shift in in thinking to really kind of open it up and to share and be collaborative and find out what other people are and doing. And let, and I think that's a great point, and let the advocates be your heroes. Let right. them advance their careers based on learning your technology. Uh, participating in your community and and taking you know their businesses forward in terms of success from a, mark, right. a marketing standpoint. So I'm just curious in terms of the holy grail of measuring engagement, you know, kind of your thoughts on that. I mean, there there are obviously engagement measures out there. Right. Um, how do you you know what are some of the things you look at to measure uh, engagement, or do you tell people they should look at the measure engagement, and how do you see engagement as a metric, as an actionable metric, kind yep. of evolving? now that we have so many more potential touch points, data points, right. other ways to measure. Yeah, so I think in the traditional marketing automation world, which we have played a big part in over the years, the true measurement has always been about pipeline, because you're, right. you're doing right. campaigns to generate revenue for your business. I don't think that goes away, but it gets extended to across the entire life cycle. So it's not just new customer acquisition, it's upsell, it's cross-sell, it's renewals if you're in a software as a service business. So it's lifetime value, not just revenue. Right, right. It's, it's advocacy, not just references. Um, it's you know peer-to-peer, -peer. there's this whole idea of voice of the customer, 
There are new companies out there like Trust Radius and G2 Crowd, which provide platforms now for customers to do reviews on products and rank companies. And making that available to users gives everybody a voice in the process. Right. So there's a whole bunch of new metrics. Um, many of them are going to be, you know, very, very much around emotional connections back to your brand. Um, and participation in, in the community. Today we have the Marketing Nation, which is a 60,000 person community. The way I can cultivate content on that and, and grow people's roles in participating in that dialogue is certainly an engagement measure for us and it will lead to stronger sales, it will lead to stronger you know, preference in terms of our brand, it will lead to premium pricing if we want to do that in the future, et cetera. Right, um, and then I wonder too if you could just speak to the evolving role of marketing um, not only within the company, but specifically within IT spend and business analytics spend and really as a driver. Because before, yep. the analytics was really uh, a service provider to the rest of the company and yep. we gave you your quarterlies and your weekly sales reports and you know that was kind of the role of IT. Now we're seeing IT as a business partner stepping in to say, here's all these cool technologies, but now marketing, um, and the marketing automation, which is way ahead of the automation right. in a lot of the other other places, is really driving that, and you've got measure, measurable results, and you can connect all the different channels yep. uh, that are new that weren't there two years ago when you just had newspaper and, yep. and billboards and, and TV. So, you know, as that has evolved, how how have you seen you know marketing's role change in terms of kind of power seat at the table, driving IT investment decisions and those types of things. Obviously Marketo is one yep. of those decisions for a lot of com uh, companies. Yeah, and it's it's a great conversation because there's been a lot of talk about the, the hybrid CMO and what does that look like today because the CIO and the CMO now have to be in lockstep. In many cases now the CMO's technology budget is looking as large as the CIO's technology budget. Right, and right. so, and then there's this other notion of if, if marketing owns the customer experience or all things around customer engagement, are they not in fact the chief customer officer? And so there's a, a whole bunch of things that I think are crossing lines, but I think it's great news for the marketer because they need to be more customer centric, they need to be more data centric, and, and ultimately they sit in a really pivotal place in the organization to right. achieve many of those things. Right. And it's still interesting, and for all the soft things, uh, I'll call it a soft thing, of engagement and lifetime value and some of these some of these things that aren't necessarily tied to the bottom line at the end of the quarter, right. every quarter, um, we, still have to, we still have to respond to that. And at the end of the day, there has to be some, some tie, some connection, some demonstrated value right. of these efforts. It can't just be for uh, you know, uh, apple pie and, and, uh, and lemonade, I forget the expression, but anyway. So, because it still has to tie back to business, right? Still has Absolutely. to pay the bills, still has to get more sales. Absolutely. But, but what you're saying is it, it does. Engagement does translate to sales. Engagement translates to sales. Engagement translates to brand preference. Engagement translates to price premium. Engagement translates to advocacy. I mean, engagement is, it, it's such an active way to, to move the market forward that I think it, there's going to be a whole set of new metrics right. that, that, that combine sales enablement and, and sales processes as well because as marketing and sales partner, you know, from a sales engagement standpoint to go after named accounts, the ones that are most strategic to the business, we're going to see a huge shift in terms of sales, sales engagement metrics right. as well. Just as you're saying that, I'm thinking of, of brands, right, and always the debate about the power of brand and is, does brand still have power? And, I think it does, but it's but but the market's really kind of uh, bifurcated, where either the brand is super powerful mm -hmm. um, or has zero power. You know, kind of depending on the product or the engagement. And it sounds like really engagement is probably the best way to make sure your brand can't be replaced by the old white label stuff that they used to have at the grocery store. Yeah. Um, because people got to be connected, yep. not just a label. And they need to care about, people need to ultimately care about the relationship, not the, the one thing. I, you know, it used to be you dropped a direct mail. Right. It was sort of an episode, and right. you were never having a dialogue. Today, right. there's so many ways and so many channels to reach people, you have to have a consistent way to engage and a consistent way to look at, did I, did I move the needle forward? Right. Am I ultimately renewing that customer or generating more loyalty from that customer or or you know referenceability or advocacy and so engagement helps you do do that through all the channels yeah. it's interesting because because the customer can engage with you whether you or communicate with you whether you necessarily want it that's right or not in uh, in new ways that were 
heretofore not existent. That's right. Fun stuff. Great yeah. place to be. Well, Karen, I yeah. loved uh, sitting down and, and, and uh, talking about engagement. It's a thing we talk about here all the time. Great. Um, it's, it's, it's really how we should measure success. It's how we know we're getting through. And um, look forward to a follow-up. I know you have some research coming out and some books coming out. Marquetta's up to all kinds of stuff. So we will uh, we'll look for that in the not-so-distant future. Awesome. <laughs> Thank right. you. We look forward to it. Absolutely. She's Thanks Karen Steele from Marquetta. I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching theCUBE. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.